All right, guys, been a hot minute with the big bad iron LY6 408 stroker build. So I can't remember where I even last film so i'll fill you guys in as much as i can and i'll I suppose i'll edit and cut it to, to suit if i have already filled in a lot of this but ended up sending it back down to the machine shop i wasn't completely happy with how the torrington was machined onto the crank and the way that it fit i couldn't get it to sit properly and because of that i ended up actually ruining a set of main bearings because i took too much off the front side of the thrust bearing because this wasn't seated properly and i didn't realize until after the fact so that was a bit of a pain and i had to redo a lot of things uh lesson learnt you know again this whole torrington thrust is somewhat new to us this is only the second engine that i built with one of these mistake made learnt from moved on from but yeah ended up pulling it back apart sending that back to the machine shop and getting a few things altered um and it's the same deal with the machine shop we're working with guys they're really really good machinists we um absolutely endorse them 100 percent. but it's the same deal where they've learnt with us as far as this torrington thrust setup goes and as far as i can see uh there are there aren't a lot of people using these bearings that we're using which are quite a good bearing, lots of load rating, used a lot in uh, torque converters, so obviously can take a heap of load, but very thin, which means that you are very much limiting the impact you're having on the structural integrity of the crank, provided you do the machine work right. So we're all learning together a little bit as far as these go, but much happier now with where this is at. So as well as that, because it came apart, I had some issues with the big ends, spent a lot of time fishing bearings, getting the big ends all perfect, only to sort of start going and double checking diags and stuff and finding that they weren't very round or they weren't as round as I'd like given how much effort and time had gone into this and the fact that it was coming back apart and going back to the machine shop anyway I had them resize all of the rods so all of the, all the rods have been resized re-rounded and I did get them just to hone out the little ends a little bit just just make everything a little bit nicer I'm just a little bit happier with everything now. So I've had to redo all the bearing clearances. I'm halfway through redoing the mains now, getting them all spotty dog. And that's where we're up to with it. So we're back here tonight, burning the midnight oil to try and get it together because the owner, as I talked about, we're not, we're not running this anymore. And the owner has sold it now. It is going this weekend. So I'm trying to get it together for its new owner. It's now going into a full drive. We're not going to be running the 1242T from Crow anymore. We are going to be putting a 1287 in this because they are talking about supercharging in future. So given that it's going to a four-wheel drive, uh, you know, as you guys know, the 1287 we like to use for mildly aggressive street cars paired with like a 2800 converter in a six liter. So given that this has got a four inch stroke, it's gonna eat up quite a bit of cam. We uh, believe in a four wheel drive that's gonna be manual with like four threes or four elevens or whatever it will have. That 1287 is gonna be a really good cam as far as pretty good manners, make good power with all this, all these cubes. And not to mention that we know that that 1287 does perform really well with boost. So in future, when they do wanna supercharge it, the cam's gonna do quite well in that aspect, in that situation as well. So that's what's going on with this. The 1287's going in get it together. It's a lot of engine to chuck into a four-wheel drive, but it's not our decision to make or ours to sell or ours to buy or anything. We're just building it for the bloke. So we'll build it. Yeah, a lot of engine for a four-wheel drive, but it will be an animal. So we'll get it together. Anyway, I just figured I'd update everyone on where we're at. Film <laughs> a little bit more of this going together. And now our 427 is ready to be collected from the machine shop. I just haven't had a chance to get down there and get it. I wanted to get it this week, but I've ended up spending all week trying to get this thing smashed together in time for this weekend so early next week we'll go get our first 427 stuff from the machine shop we'll get it back here and start getting it together start having a look into the uh big bad ls next 427 setup we've got our heads our heads are here rex has had a peek i haven't rex reckons they look awesome so excited to get all that stuff unboxed and uh be like christmas engine builder tuna christmas anyway on the coke just to try and stay awake keep alert get this thing together let's get it All right, it's all coming up Millhouse. All right guys, as usual, good old crow off the shelf grind. We're pretty much bang on, carded at zero. So good crank, cams ground well, everything, keyways in the right spot. Everything's freaking wicked, everything's good. So, awesome. Yeehaw, look at that. Back here again tonight, burning the midnight oil again. It is literally just before midnight. As you can see, rockers all sorted. CHE trunnions, brand new rocker posts, all brand new rockers, brand new covers, all brand new, brand new, brand new. 
it's all brand new. So um, yeah, you can see our lovely, beautiful CNC ported heads there. Uh, as always with the CNC ported heads, thread seal it on the intake rocker bolts to try and seal them from the intake ports where the CNC program actually blows the port out into the bolt threads. Uh, but yeah, anyway, all the standard stuff guys, but it's coming together awesome. Really nice little engine. Uh, for what this is going in with this uh, 1287 is what ended up in it is uh, it's going to be a really nice little combo this thing really nice um, so I forgot to actually get it on this camera but I took a heap of photos and little videos on my phone but yeah the crush ring head gaskets I'll show you them I'll chuck them in for you guys to have a look at but yeah massively overkill for what this thing's going in now but you can see the CA625 gas studs CA65 aged ARP head studs, plus the crush ring, Athena seal ring, gaskets, uh, yeah. This thing should be pretty freaking wicked. Alright, boys and girls, she's uh, mostly together. All the brand new, cool stuff. Um, fresh covers and everything. So, the sump that is here is old and dirty and it's got turbo fittings and stuff welded into it that aren't necessary. So, he does have another one that I'm going to get him to bring. Look how good those CA65 studs look. Um, so that's coming tomorrow. I'll whack that on tomorrow. Uh, I do have to clearance the front cover to suit the dual row timing setup. Uh, I knew I would have to, but it is currently dumb, dumb idiot o'clock on a wee hours of Saturday morning. So I'm not going to go get in the die grinder out at the moment. So this thing is getting picked up in T minus five hours. <laughs> so I should probably shoot home and get some sleep at this point. But uh, yeah, got it together. Uh, unfortunately. Had to work nights to get it done, but that's what happens. Um, building engines is one of those things where it's very, uh, I don't know, involved in, um, not in the way that I'm you'd normally, that, that probably is not coming the way, <laughs> coming across the way that I really want it to. Um, in that, you have to be in it. You have to be in, in it. You, you're building an engine or you're not building an engine. So um, when you've got lots of distractions, it's very difficult. Uh, like you have to be focused is the main thing I'm trying to say. It's a, it's a very high focus thing. You get into a bit of a flow state, you gotta focus on what you're doing and you just gotta work through building your engine. Now when you continuously get interrupted, uh, gotta go do other things, um, you know. <laughs> it's just a result of running business, it is what it is, but it just makes it hard uh, to, to really get it in and get it done. So um, I actually really don't mind building engines after hours at night time on weekends, that sort of thing, because for that exact reason, I can come here, lock myself in the engine room, build the frickin' engine. I'm not obligated to answer the phone, look at emails. No one's gonna come and annoy me. Uh, you can just sort of get in, get it done, and I do quite enjoy it that way. But anyway, that's the big old 408 finally built, uh, and we will move on to our 427. Uh, I felt good to smash out another motor. It's been a while since I actually built an engine, uh, and this has been sort of just a, something that's been in here for ages that I've been meaning to get to, and I just haven't, so it feels really good to get it done. We are burning the midnight oil again tonight, but we've got our LS Next block back from the machine shop, done the final clean. It is time for us to start getting this big, bad 427 together well it's actually i actually finally looked up all the part numbers and it's actually going to be a 429 cubic inch because it's a 40 30 ball uh sorry not 40 30 41 30 it's not 4125 it's 41 30 ball um four inch stroke makes it a 429 cubic inch so big dog anyway it's all back from the machine shop now we've got our turret and thrust uh machined into the crank i also had the machine properly the dual row timing kit so uh, it is properly set up for a dual row in that it actually will align properly and it's been machined so that the chain doesn't rub on the crank or anything like that so uh, proper dual row setup that's all machined ready to go finished uh, I literally just engraved all of our rods with our rod numbers so they're all engraved now so I can rub off all of the paint pen we've got our rod bearings that came out of the engine here so basically uh, even though the engine was already built it is start again from scratch, re-blueprinted re basically, check make sure it was done right. So weirdly enough, it was built, have no idea why, uh, you know, we've got these really beautiful Oliver rods, really nice CP pistons. They're in a diamond box because I put them in a diamond box, but they are CP bullets. And for whatever reason, just put together with these tiny baby wrist pins. And I have no idea why, I couldn't tell you why. I thought maybe I was missing something. I thought maybe I was silly. I, I don't understand, um, but I, these make no sense. These wrist pins are not going to do 
what the rest of the combo was built to do. So we did upgrade the wrist pins. So we've got uh, some big dog 2300 wrist pins here. Um, big, nice, thick ones. Like, look at the difference between these two. Oh, let me put this up here. But look at that. Look at the difference between that and that. Huge, massive. So anyway, so this is more alike what we need for this combo. But unfortunately, because we were adding weight to the rotating assembly to rebalance, it meant we had to add a heap of Mallory. And Mallory is expensive, but it's the only way that we could rebalance. But anyway, we have had it rebalanced to suit our new wrist pins. And as I already stated just before, it is now machined for our Torrington thrust along with the front back of the front cap and front main webbing. So we're good to go for Torrington thrust. We're good to go for big uh, wrist pins. Uh, so yeah, it's time to just start putting this thing together like the same way we always put engines together. We've got the rings that I pulled off the pistons as well. So we'll get these in the bores. We'll double check uh, our ring gaps. Um, again, like this is all built by someone else. Everything has to be checked once again as we put it all back together. Uh, but yeah, excited to get this 420, uh, 429 cube together. And um, yeah, she's got to be a weapon. All right, guys, back here this morning. I ended up here until about 12.30 just after midnight last night, uh, working on this thing. Um, didn't quite get it together as I wanted to, but um, there are a few things to sort out that I wasn't really anticipating. I sort of wanted to get it together as a short engine. My plan was to sort of get here this morning and smack it together and sort of have it as a short engine. The owner is dropping the car off today, so I wanted to have a short engine to show him when he got here. But last night I went to start checking ring gaps and I did write down a set of gaps in the book when I pulled it down. And when I checked cylinder one, last night very different to what i had written down and really tight like a lot tighter than i really like um so it became pretty evident that i was gonna have to go through and check all the ring gaps then i was having a look this morning even just like all of the casting i really like to clean up all this casting it's not very nice a little bit of time on the die grinder really clean all that up would be nice and i decided that um i probably shouldn't assume that uh this thing was freshly built obviously it had just been put together when i got here but between those wrist pins obviously these ring gaps i shouldn't assume that it's freshly been put together and wasn't just a slap together of spare parts to sell off out of the shed sort of thing uh which is sort of those wrist pins is sort of what makes it seem so i've decided instead of slapping together to try to get this short block together uh i am gonna Spend some time, clean up all this casting. By all accounts, I'm starting again, pretty much. I've decided to just treat it like it's a fresh fresh block that just came back from whatever and start from scratch. It's, it's annoying because I just did the final wash yesterday and what I ended up doing last night was there was so much brake clean going on in here and I was getting so dizzy that I decided I'll try and get all of the brake cleaning that I had to do done last night so that when I got here this morning, I could sort of just do what I needed to do uh, and, and start getting it together. But that was prior to obviously figuring out that I was going to have to regap all these rings. So, um... Yeah, a fair bit more work's gonna have to go into it than I'd originally anticipated, but that's engines. <laughs> that's engines, it's gotta be right. Bo's over here putting together an LS1. So, we're about to start swinging elbows in here for superiority and engine room territory. Righto guys, we're back here tonight trying to get this engine done. It seems to be the going theme lately. It appears the only time I can ever really ever get any engine work done is after hours. All of this casting, roughness i want to clean up but anyway while we're here and i'm filming anyway here is what we are building this for not the corvette <laughs> the big old blue wagon so this is the big blue kingswood wagon she's going to be a pretty serious get up so obviously along with our 429 cube it's dart blocked uh ls based with our four and a half liter whipple blower um, it's also going to have AC system with a big interchiller setup. Keep IATs real low. This thing's gonna have cruise control, working AC, the whole berries. Uh, so he's already had most of the fab work done. Rear end, as you can see, she's a pretty serious bit of kit. It's got chute and wheelie bar mount. Fuel tank's already done. We just gotta do the actual fuel system, all the plumbing. Uh, don't get me wrong, there's still heaps that we have to do. But I just wanna give you a look at what's going on in the rear end here. She's um. She's pretty full on. Um, so we do already have a tail shaft as well built, which we've got here. His exhaust system's already been built. As you can see, it's got a full Castlemaine rod shop front end, rack and pinion uh, coilover setup. Um, so the, the standard front chassis has been unpicked and taken out and we've got the full Castlemaine rod shop front end. So yeah, obviously real good brakes, rack and pinion, coilovers, 
the whole shebang, the whole hog. Uh, and yeah, our four and a half liter Whipple blown 429 cube LS with our 2000 horsepower rated turbo 400. Now they rate this at 2000 horsepower. Uh, however, I'm not a huge fan of the fact that it's built in a stock case. Um, for those who know about turbo 400s and how they work and things that can go wrong, it is kind of scary. <laughs> Yeah, to be honest, it's just plain scary. So uh, when it goes, it's got to go back to the Fabby to obviously get the headers redone in, in, in two inch primaries. Uh, I am going to ask them to build a full scatter shield for this gearbox because I'm not too stoked about the fact that uh, this 2000 horsepower rated gearbox is built in a non SFI uh, case. So either that or just a ballistics blanket, but something to contain everything in case of a gearbox failure. But that's the car. Uh, so the plan is Haltech Nexus R5, which we've already got. Uh, also PDM16 is going to power the entire car. We've got a 15 keypad, CAN keypad from Haltech as well. So that's going to be all of our lights, cruise control, uh, boost setting, a few new things that we're going to be doing. Um, so really excited about this build. Obviously, it's a very high caliber, high horsepower street car, uh, strip, uh, drive, and, drive and drag car. So. Anyway, just thought I'd run you through that while it was here. Uh, but yeah, Nexus R5, PDM16, can, can keypad, and uh, now IC7 digital dash. All the sensors you can throw at it under the sun. We'll be wiring the whole thing in-house. Uh, just did a huge big order of wire and stuff and new consumables and, and braid and everything else. So yeah, uh, but anyway, there's going to be obviously a lot of fab work that still has to be done, which uh, I don't think we'll be doing pretty much any of the fab work. Rogan Industries has done the fab work already on the car and built the rear end. Really, really good work. It's going back to Rogan to obviously do the new headers. Uh, so I think we'll just sort of get everything sorted and all of our ideas for what we want to do as far as reservoirs, everything else we'll probably try and get Rogan to do when it goes back there just to keep with the theme of how nice the fab work is. Obviously we can do fabrication guys, but we're not professional fabricators and there's no shame in admitting that our work uh, will not be to the standard of what's already done on the car. So if we can, we'd like to keep it finished at that sort of standard. Um, same with the HQ, you know, we didn't do the, the fabrication on the HQ for that very reason. We got Ryan at Elite Fab Works to do it. So yeah, anyway, exciting stuff. That's enough babble. Let's get this block sorted, get this freaking engine together. It's been too long. We've got our Brodix BR7 heads here that have been CNC ported by our boys there at Tremaniac Racing or Next Gen Engineering. So these are some sexy heads, guys. Very sexy heads. I'm just waiting on a whole heap of stuff that I've ordered to get the, the top end together. I don't have everything. Oh, I don't have everything here to get all the top end together. But look at these heads. So BR7 Brodix LS7 heads, six bolt. These are some arousing <laughs> parts, guys. They're bloody beautiful. So yeah, full CNC ported, big bales. LS7 heads. Ordered a heap of stuff from Mr. Troy Worsley at Warspeed Engineering. Uh, Warspeed, I don't know what he actually calls, but Warspeed engines, <laughs> Warspeed race engines. Obviously he is the man when it comes to LS builds of this nature and this caliber. Um, and the cam that came in this engine when he was purchased as a short uh, is a Warspeed custom ground or one of his own grinds from Kelford, the Wasp 01. And from what we've been able to find information wise about it, we are very happy to run that. It is going to suit our purpose quite well. We just got to try and get hold of a cam card for it. Uh, but just hit up Troy and got the uh, recommended springs, valve springs and everything else to suit uh, the cam and some P1 head studs to suit the 23 stud heads. Uh, but anyway, so there's a bit of stuff on the way. guys you can see here
standard dart block how it looks and then once cleaned up get all the dags off polish it out much nicer than the way it comes so a little effort goes a long way get the rest of this done got some rings there you go guys this sides all darts crap casting there you go this side which is all on song performance beautiful cleaned up this is looking much nicer than when it was before all right and the final product much nicer much cleaner good block prep a lot of hours that goes into it but it's these little differences or little things i should say that make big difference to the final product the overall quality and neatness and tidiness and attention to detail so worth doing worth Dulux. All right, we've got our new feeler gauges that we can actually see, which is great. So we're starting to get these rings. Got our new electric ring filer, very high tech. Boy, that is a nice looking electronic ring filer. Why doesn't mine look like that? Guys, it's now 10.30 on Wednesday nights, two nights in a row, working sort of late, just trying to get this stuff done, trying to not be rushing it or anything like that. Obviously, these sorts of engines or any sort of engine, you don't want to be rushing, but particularly something of this sort of caliber. So, um, gapped all the rings, they're all done, cleaned up all the rings with the hobby file, they've all been cleaned up, there's no burrs, nothing on them. Uh, finished putting all of my wire locks in the pistons, so rings are ready to go on pistons. I've undone all the caps and split them, so they're ready to go. The block's been completely final cleaned, fully bottle brushed with all the plugs taken out. Um, so I have to now reassemble, well, re, re do all the plugs for the block. Got to get a limp back in. Glad I bottle brushed it. A lot of crap came out of it that I wasn't too happy with. So I'm glad I made that decision to just completely do that again. Uh, but anyway, it's bottle brushed, all cleaned up as you've already seen. So we're pretty much ready to main bearings, check our end float and go. So time to, uh, yeah. Been saying that for freaking ages for time to get this thing together. But anyway, I think that's enough babble for this episode, just getting the block to here and taking you through the plan for the build. I'm sorry that it's probably not a really exciting episode, but at least you get the full plan for the build and what's gonna happen. Um, we'll tune in for the next episode where we'll start doing actual engine assembly. I'll um, give a good look at these heads. We'll get these heads dummy fitted uh, if we don't have our top end stuff by then and get this uh, blower manifold dummy fitted as well and start having a look at how this thing's got to look all together as one piece really excited we do have the blower here i don't know if i showed you or not but we do have a four and a half liter whipple in the, the shed here it's ready to go so um yeah really excited to get all this stuff dummy together and together and then see how it looks all all as one looking forward to it thanks for watching as always guys we'll see you on the next one tune in smash like smash subscribe so you don't miss it peace out see you bye